Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. store in town. Don't call them places drugstores. Granny's right, Jethro. Put the truck away. Yeah, but the sign on the front said drugstore. I don't care what it says. I say they's not drugstores. They is what-not shops. <laughs> Granny's right, Jethro. Put the truck away. You can buy automobile tires, bed springs, chocolate sodies, <laughs> but just let a doctor walk in like I done and ask for a simple healing drug. Like bull nettle root and wahoo bark. <laughs> and they look at you like you were some kind of a nut. Granny's right, Jethro. Put the truck away. <laughs> well, maybe they don't sell bull nettle root or wahoo bark. Then don't call them drugstores. <laughs> Granny's right, Jethro. Put the truck away. But the sign on the front said drugstore. Jethro, <laughs> put the truck away. Granny! from Aunt Pearl while you was at the drugstore. I didn't get took to no drugstore. I got took to a whatnot shop. What's a whatnot shop? That's what Jethro calls a drugstore. You can buy step ladders and garden hoses and cheese burgers. Open the box, Granny. But when a doctor like me walks in and tries to buy a few life-saving drugs, then you find out it ain't no drugstore. But the sign out front said drugstore. Jethro, put the truck away. I don't care what the sign says. In the box, Granny. If you can't believe a sign, what, what can you believe? I believe what I believe. Look ahead, Granny. Hey, Pearl, since you're everything you need for your tiny. I wouldn't have had to take you to the drugstore. Take me where? He needs a whatnot shop. Now let's all get together and help Granny make her spring tonic. Jethro, you go out and light a big fire under the kettle. But you told me to put the truck away. Well, now I'm telling you to make a fire. Get going. <laughs> Put the truck away, Jethro. Light a fire, Jethro. I just got two hands. I'm only human. And it ain't a whatnot shop, neither. It's a drugstore. Come on, Ellie. Let's go to the kitchen and start making my tonic. Well, now, hold on, Granny. You always made your tonic out by the cement pond. Jethro will chop wood, build a fire, tote that big heavy kettle, fill it with water, all for nothing. Yeah. Well, that's what can happen when you're so dumb. You don't know a drugstore from a whatnot shop. <laughs> Chief, guess who is here to see you? Hello. A member of international royalty. Her ladyship, the Countess Maria de Beauchamp, Constantine Smythe, Brackenridge, de Cordoba, Halgut, should Kosabianca von Holstein. No. Yeah. Well, lock the vault and tell her I'm not in. Gee. Look, I've run into these international freeloaders before. The longer the name, the shorter the bank account. But, Chief... Give me a name like Ford, Getty, Morgan, Clampett. The Countess is worth $100 million. Give me a name like Maria de Beauchamp, Constantine. Why am I being kept waiting? Oh, a thousand pardons, your ladyship. A hundred million pardons, your imperial highness. I'm a countess, not a queen. <laughs> that 
is a hand, not an ear of corn. <laughs> oh, forgive me, your royal majesty. Uh, how may we be of service to your ladyship? Well, actually, the purpose of my visit here is to see the Clampets again. Say, that's right. You became quite good friends of my Clampets. Just a year ago this time. Oh, yes, spring tonic time. <laughs> that's what brought me back, really. You know, I was in Paris attending a party for the prince when I suddenly realized it was time for Granny to start brewing her magic elixir. So I just hopped in a jet without even stopping to change. <laughs> the Clampets will be delighted to see you. Oh, how are they? Richer than ever. I believe the Countess meant, are they happy? Are they content? I just answered that. Richer than ever. <laughs> oh, speaking of money, Mr. Drysdale, I'll be needing some. Now, would you please arrange to transfer a million or so from one of my Swiss accounts into your bank here? Oh, yes, your gracious majesty. <laughs> you stop nibbling on me. <laughs> now, I believe I have one of my cars in storage here, but until I can arrange for a chauffeur, I shall need transportation. Oh, my faithful and expensive secretary is yours to command. It would be my pleasure, your ladyship. Well, thank you. That's very kind of you. You know, I'm absolutely helpless without a chauffeur. Oh, speaking of chauffeurs, how is Humphrey? Who? The rather elderly gentleman who was driving you last year. Yes, after some of Granny's tonic, you married him. Oh, of course, that Humphrey. <laughs> oh, dear sweet man. I lost him soon after the wedding. Oh? What a pity. Yes, we were given a huge wedding reception, and I lost him in the crowd. You never found him? No, and I, I stayed until the last guest had gone. <laughs> well, here's the information you'll need on my Swiss bank. Now, let's run along, my dear. We have lots of shopping to do. You know, speaking of Humphrey, I miss him terribly. He was such an excellent chauffeur. I'll tell the Clampers to be expecting you. Oh, yes, thank you. I do hope Mr. Clampett hasn't changed. He was so, so different. Such a vital, stimulating man. He still is, richer than ever. <laughs> what do you think, Granny? Reckon making your tonic inside has hurt it any? Won't know for sure till I test it. But I think we have a good, stout batch, don't you, Jed? Well, judging by the way it blistered the paint on a ceiling, I'd say so. <laughs> Granny? Found a dandy bunch of bottles for you. Good. Where'd you get them? At the drugstore. Where? At the drug... At the whatnot shop. That's better. Now, you and Ellie take them into the pantry and wash them out good with my lye soap. Come on, Jethro. But, Granny, these bottles is what you call sterilized. Don't you worry. My lye soap will kill anything. But, Granny... Wash the bottles, boy. But, Uncle Jed... Wash the bottles. <laughs> But Granny don't even know what sterilized means. Well, suppose you tell me, Mr. City-educated smart alley. Sterilized means that they's ready to put medicine in right now. Oh, and uh, who told you that? Well, the fella down to the... the fella at the whatnot shop. What do they know about medicine at a whatnot shop? Worst the bottles, boy. <laughs> Can I come in? Why, you bet you can. Howdy, Mr. Drysdale. You're just in time to have some of Granny's spring tonic. That's right. Ah, yes. The magic elixir that has brought Her Highness all the way from Paris. The what that brought who from where? <laughs> the Countess von Holstein, you remember her. Oh, yeah, that's that pretty woman with all the jewels and the big car that took such a liking to your tonic. You mean took such a liking to you? Made a big fuss over Jed. I know, I know. Oh, I was just a tonic talking. Besides, uh, she's a married woman. Not anymore. And she's coming to see you. Me? Here you are, Mr. Drysdale. I cut it some for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, here's to the Countess von Clapp... Holstein. <laughs> Granny, I think you got a good stout batch. <laughs> Granny, I reckon you better.
You better cut that tonic a little more for city folks. Uncle Jed? I finally got Mr. Drysdale home, but he was hiring a hawk. Uncle Jed? He grabbed his wife and kissed her. Like to scare that poor woman to death. Uncle Jed? <laughs> what is it, Jethro? When you marry up with the Countess, are you gonna live in a castle with a moat and a drawbridge and a tower and a dungeon and knights in iron suits fighting with swords and lances and rescuing damsels in distress? Hold it, hold it. Who said I was gonna marry a Countess? Well, gr Jethro, get back to your job. You know that tonic has to be bottled before the full of the moon or it'll turn on us. Granny, did you start that story? Of course not. My granny told me that story 65 years ago when she first learned me to make tonic. I'm talking about the Countess. Who? Oh, the Countess, Granny. Uh, you told me and Allie that... Yes, well, <laughs> get back to corking them bottles. And while you're at it, find one to fit your mouth. <laughs> you have something to do, Jed? I do for a fact, Granny. I gotta put a stop to this nonsense about me marrying the Countess. I don't want to hear another word about it. Uncle Jed? What? Can I be one of your knights? Yes, oh. <laughs> you said nothing about marrying a Countess? If Jethro's gonna be a knight, I'm gonna be a knight. Girls can't be knights. I can be anything you can be. You can't neither. Can't you? Can't. 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 I get back to work to both of you. Granny, I want to have a little talk with you alone. Well, I'm awful busy, Jed. I, I gotta get that tonic bottled or it's liable to eat right through the kettle. <laughs> Youngins will watch it. Now, you come with me. Now, uh, uh, now, now Jed, uh, I ain't been feeling well lately. I think I'm coming down with something. I wouldn't want you to catch it. I ain't the one that's gonna catch it. <laughs> I was afraid of that. <laughs> Ellie, you ain't been as fur in school as me. I've read whole books on the stuff, and girls can't be knights. Why not? Don't ask me. Ask King Arthur. <laughs> Best you can be as a maiden or a damsel. What do they do? They sit up in towers wailing and bellering, throwing down handkerchiefs and stuff, hoping some knight will come along and rescue them. Well, I ain't sat in no tower waiting for you to rescue me. I wouldn't rescue you if you was the last damsel on earth. You dumb old girl. <laughs> Who are you calling? You, that's who! <laughs> Granny, like I've been saying, what would a grand lady like the Countess want with a rough old cob like me? What do you mean? She came within that much tonic of marrying you last year. And that's another thing. No tonic except as a going away present. All right, Jed. When you two leave on your honeymoon, I'll give you his and her jugs. <laughs> And I don't want to hear one word of marriage talk. <laughs> Mr. Clappett, Granny, look who's here. Well, hi there, Miss Countess, ma'am. Oh, now that's no way to greet an old friend. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say nothing. <laughs> oh, Granny, how are you? I'm fine, and yourself, and how's the mister? Who? Your husband. Oh, I'm not married now. Oh, do tell. <laughs> you know, the Countess flew 6,000 miles for some of your tonic. Well, I just made a new batch. Come on to the kitchen. <laughs> it's a uh, mite too raw for drinking now, Miss Countess. Uh, that tonic ain't nothing to fool with when it's green. Really? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I remember when Granny used to make it in a hollow stump. Uh, after she drawed it off, many the time I've seen that old stump get up and go off through the woods looking for bear. <laughs> Ellie May, let go! Oh! Oh, Ellie May, uh, you put him down. No, no, don't fling him! Oh! <laughs> now, young and stop that. Ellie May, you get off of him. Oh! Say it! Say it! You're a knight! You're a knight! <laughs> I'm a damsel. <laughs> Get up from there, both of you. I declare, Ellie May, you need a paddler. Just needs a more. Say hello to the Countess, Ellie May. Howdy, ma'am. Hi there, Miss Jane. Ellie May? Well, hello, Ellie May. Well, you're as beautiful and spirited as ever, I see. All she needs is a more to straighten her out. <laughs> Howdy, you royal county ship. Hey, you got a castle? <laughs> Why, yes, as a matter of fact, I have. Can I be one of your knights? No, you can't! Can! Can't! Can't! Now, stop that. You're gonna be 
be ashamed of yourself in front of company. All she needs is a more. Let's get some tonic. Really? That tonic ain't ready. Uh, I have a suggestion, Your Ladyship. Uh, Jethro here is an excellent driver. We could take this opportunity to get your car out of storage. Oh, would you, Jethro? You bet he would, ma'am. Uh, go to counters, boy. I hope you'll come back and take Vittles with us. You too, Miss Jean. Oh, I'd be delighted. Another time for me. I'll fix you something special, Countess. Oh, you don't have to do that. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> now, you hurry back. What you gonna fix, Granny? My courtship special. Turnip greens and tonic gravy. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd that come from? Well, it sounded like the kitchen. Uh-oh. Mr. Drysdale snuck back for another snort. <laughs> Fly time. I suspect he was a mite over tonic. <laughs> I reckon he was. He grabbed his wife and went to hugging and kissing again. I was halfway home and she come running after me, yelling and screaming. Scared of him? No, she just wanted to give me this for a refill. <laughs> Good stout batch this year, Jim. I put in a little extra angelica root and heart leaf. Yeah, you just want to be sure the countess don't get a hold of none. Jim. That countess didn't fly no 6,000 miles for my gravy. I, I, I mean, my tonic. <laughs> that woman is looking for a husband. Now, you get upstairs and mow that stubble off your face and put on some decent clothes. Granny, the countess may be looking for a husband, but it ain't me. What are you talking about? Why, the minute she caught sight of you, she commenced grinning like a fox eating yellow jackets. <laughs> Forget it. Then she flang her arms around you like she was drowning, and you was the only log in sight. Granny, a high-stepping filly like the Countess wouldn't hitch up to an old plow mule like me. How about Humphrey? He was twice your age, and she married him. Only because she was tonic to the eyeball. Well, she wasn't. I don't want to hear no more about it. I know how fond you are of matchmaking, but this time you're toting water with a leaky bucket. All right, Jeff. You have heard my last words on the subject. Good. I give up. I quit. Thank you. But just let me say this. A beautiful peach like the Countess ain't going to hang on the tree forever. And if she gets picked, don't you come crying to me, and that's all I'm going to say. Thank you. I tried to talk cold turkey to you, but I can see it's going to take hot gravy. What does that mean? Never mind. Just remember what I told you. Before or after your last word? <laughs> How'd I do, Miss Countess? Was I all right? Well... Your style of driving isn't as conservative as Humphrey's, but all in all, I think you'll make an excellent chauffeur. Does that mean I can drive you around all the time you're in town? Oh, I see no reason why not, if your Uncle Jed approves. Yeehaw! Let's go tell him! Oh, restrain yourself. We will not tell your Uncle Jed. We shall ask him. And, and perhaps I'd better do the talking. Yes, ma'am. Oh, boy, I hope he says yes. Sure would love driving that car around and wearing a fancy uniform. <laughs> oh, that reminds me, we'll have to get you a chauffeur's license. Hot dog! This is pretty near as good as being at night. <laughs> Just one more thing, Jed, and that will be my last word. Uncle Jed? Hey, Uncle Jed, the Countess has got something to ask you. Hey, come on in, Countess, he's right here. Maybe she's going to propose to you. <laughs> oh, Mr. Clamford, I'm sure that you and Granny remember Humphrey. Yes, ma'am, we sure do. We heard you lost him. Well, yes, I did. And I didn't realize until I came here how very much I need someone to take his place. Keep talking, Marie. <laughs> well, I think I found that someone. 
Here it comes. <laughs> of course, the final decision will be up to Mr. Clampett. Get ready, Jed. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, Jethro is perfect. Miss Countess, you're a fine woman, and I'm proud you asked me, but... Who? <laughs> Jethro! Me, Uncle Jed? Hey, please say yes. I just love that fancy car, the Countess's, and I can go everywhere with her and wear a fancy uniform. <laughs> oh, there's more to it than that. Oh, I, I know, we gotta get a license first. <laughs> That's just the beginning. Suppose you and the Countess don't get along together. Well, heck fire, I'll just up and quit. <laughs> Boy, you are green enough to stick in the ground and grow. Marie, ain't this kind of sudden? Oh, well, I guess it is, Granny, but I had to find someone quickly. I'm only going to be here a short time. <laughs> Uncle Jed says it's all right to go ahead and get the uniform and the license, but then we got to come right back here and talk it over some more. Come on, Countess. Uh, just one thing before you go, ma'am. Uh, was this your idea or Jethro? Well, he was the first to mention it, but I must confess I'd been thinking the very same thing. <laughs> well, we'll hurry back. I still haven't had any of that tonic. Good thing. They'd have done been hitched in honeymoon. Well, Jed, don't say I didn't warn you. The peach has done been picked. It ain't the peach I'm worried about. It's the picker. What are you going to do now? I'm going to do me a little peach poaching. <laughs> Jed and she'll leave Jethro by the side of the road. I just hope I can bring it off without hurting the boy. He's counting big on that castle and all. You can do it, Jed. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Yeah, but there ain't no way to do it that the cat's gonna like it. <laughs> I promised that you could pick out your own uniform, but uh, this is a little ostentatious. You'll like it even better when you see the hat. <laughs> <laughs> How's this? I must admit, it's even more ostentatious. Thank you. Let's go show Uncle Jed. You sure you don't need a little help, Jed? Oh, I reckon not, Granny. Hey. Look what the Countess got for me to wear. How about this, Uncle Jed? Well, that's real grand, boy. It is better than that. It is ostentatious. <laughs> Wait till Lily sees it. She'll turn green. Oh, Granny, I see you have some tonic. Is it ready now? Is it, Jed? It is. Uh, give her a double. <laughs> and then, uh, could you and me have a little talk uh, alone in the parlor? I'd be delighted. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's Marie's car. I found my bride at last. Just a steady, Humphrey, steady. Your, your long search is over. I never lost hope. I knew she'd come back here where we fell in love last year in tonic time. <laughs> Miss Jane, who's this? You remember Humphrey? Humphrey, we thought he was dead. Are you sure he ain't? <laughs> Just weary. He's been searching for his bride ever since they became separated at the wedding reception. I, I accidentally locked myself in the wine cellar. Here, old soldier, this will brace you up. Where's Marie? She's in the bar getting proposed to. She's where? <laughs> it's your husband, Humphrey. I forgot to cut it. I've come to take you home. Oh, Humphrey. <laughs> was that really old Humphrey? No, Jed. That was the new Humphrey. I give him a double. Dose of uncut tonic. <laughs> goodbye, goodbye. We'll be back in tonic time. <laughs> hey, wait! Come back! That's my job! I don't think he can catch him. I hope he don't.
don't. But if he does, he better be awful polite to Humphrey. <laughs>